So I have recently been playing around a lot with Microsoft Copilot Studio, which has given me some good experience on utilizing entities and variables within my custom Copilot bots. Now, if you wanna use Microsoft Copilot Studio, it's super important that you also understand what entities and variables are. And at least for me, these two topics were pretty confusing because they sounded like the same thing. and. All due respect to Microsoft, I didn't feel like the Microsoft documentation really answered those questions that I had. So nonetheless, here we are as we're gonna discuss the differences and similarities and how they all relate to your co-pilot. This video is gonna look and feel a little different than the rest of my videos. It's gonna be a little bit more kind of presentation style, but if you like it, feel free to let me know down in the comments down below and by liking the video. All right, all right, let's get into it. So today we are gonna talk about what entities and variables are within Microsoft Copilot Studio. So if you're outside of Microsoft Copilot Studio and you're here, I'm sorry to tell you that you are probably not on the right video, but nonetheless, here we are. And, and again, how these apply to Microsoft Copilot Studio. Now we're going to talk about each one of these different things and you know, how they are related to each other, how you can create them, how you can bug triage some of these things. But this is not necessarily going to be a super detailed deep dive demo into these different topics and creating them. Again, have plenty of screenshots in this presentation, but nonetheless, we are just gonna be talking about the differences between these so that you can better understand how to build Copilot solutions. So in Copilot Studio, you effectively have these two different things. You have entities and you have variables, and these play crucial roles in enhancing the natural language understanding and dynamic response capability Abilities of the copilot. Now, here is just a screenshot of an example where, say, we had a variable that was the person's name, and we could ask a question, hey, what's your name? And then we can refer back to that variable throughout the conversation, right? By, by saying, hey, Griffin, what sort of coffee do you like? And we'll, we'll use this coffee example throughout the, the whole presentation here. I uh, I am by no means a huge coffee guru, but I've been enjoying drinking more coffee. So, okay, <laughs> let's let's continue on here. Well, we'll first start with with entities and entities are simply units of information. Now, I think entities are a little bit more confusing in concept compared to variables, but these kind of represent specific types of data or types of real-world subjects such as phone numbers, zip codes or names. Like a phone number is an entity, if that makes sense. And, or, you know, three digits followed by a dash followed by four digits is an entity. And we'll, again, we'll continue to explain this. So they enable Copilot to recognize and extract relevant information from user inputs, which can then be saved for later use in a variable. Copilot Studio comes with a set of pre-built entities for common information types, but users can also create custom entities to suit their specific needs. Now, here are the some of the out-of-the-box entity capabilities. This is by no means all of them. I wanna say there's probably like 40 of them, um, but just so you can kind of get an idea, you know, this is something like someone's age. This could be a yes or no Boolean. This could be um, a currency like money. This could be an email with an at symbol and a dot com. This could be a phone number, a URL, et cetera. These are all different types of entities. Now. What does this kind of mean now that we begin creating entities? You can create entities by going to your copilot and then clicking on settings in the top right, clicking on entities, and then you can add, there's an add an entity button. And when you click that, you'll get this window that pops up that's in this screenshot here. And there's really just two types of entities that we're looking to talk about, or excuse me, that are currently available at this point in time. And that is going to be a closed list or a regular expression entity. And, and we are going to discuss what these are right now. So here are two different screenshots. The one in the, I guess in the middle of the screen or the left screenshot is a close, is creating a closed list entity. And the screenshot on the, on the far right is creating a regression expression entity. Now, 
Continuing with our coffee example, let me just walk through everything you're seeing in these screenshots. So when you create an entity, you're gonna obviously give that entity a name, but you're also gonna give it a description in either type. And what this description does is this actually tells Copilot a little bit more of what this entity is. I mean, it understands what a phone number is, it understands what an email is, and that those entities already exist. But say for example, I am a coffee shop, and I have a, I wanna build a co-pilot, and you know, we have this thing called a, a coffee type. This is what we want to capture throughout our conversation. And this is obviously custom to our business. And in this closed list, let's say we have three different types of coffee, right? We have a light roast, a medium roast, and a dark roast. You can kind of see those in that list there. Now, this, this description back to that is going to tell Copilot a little bit about what this coffee list is, right? It doesn't actually have, we understand what coffee may be, but Copilot does not understand what, what coffee is, especially in the context of this custom Copilot that we're building, right? And so we need to explain not necessarily what coffee is, but more of just what the coffee type is trying to find. And so, you know, I have a little bit of a description there that's kind of cut off, right? But the, the type of coffee is a, the type of coffee a customer is looking for. That's what this is talking about, as well as the roast is determined by, I say things like the strength of the flavor, the color of the coffee after it's brewed, the origin of the coffee beans, et cetera, right? So these are kind of, we're, we're adding color around this entity so that Copilot can understand and uses generative AI capabilities to say, oh, this person, we need to, based off of what they just said in this prompt, we can say that the coffee type is a medium roast, if that makes sense. I, I hope this makes sense. Something that's cool is with these items is you can add synonyms. So some synonyms for light roast could be light or could be blonde. Uh, medium roast, we could do a regular roast or a medium roast or and then a dark roast. Say, uh, if someone were to say the words full bodied or dark, we want it to understand we're talking about dark roast here. And you can obviously expand these lists. I'm not aware of any synonym limits. Um, I'm sure there is one, but I don't think you necessarily have to worry about running into those. But these synonyms are gonna be used where say, I don't necessarily, you know, if, if I don't explicitly say light roast, I still want Copilot to understand my coffee type should be light roast. And so that's kind of what these synonyms are there to do. Now, you don't necessarily need to include all of the potential typo variations of light roast. Like you don't need to do L-I-H-G-T roast and L-I-G-T-H roast. Like it understands typos. Um, automatically, you don't necessarily, though that's not necessarily what we need to use the synonyms for, but the synonyms, again, is going to be used for words that are similar or are often used in relation to one of these options in our closed list. You'll notice too, kind of last thing, you'll probably want to turn on smart matching. Um, it's on by default, and this enables the co-pilot's understanding of natural language, and this can help match misspellings, grammar variations, and words with similar meanings, kind of like I was just saying there. So that's the closed list. The account, the, the other side where we have account number, right, the regular expression. Now, this in, in very similar, this is very similar in a lot of ways, right? We have our, our name, we have our description, but instead of a closed list, now this will be used whenever there is, say, a particular pattern. So say for an example, in, in this example, we have an account number. And let's say that you know we use Microsoft Dynamics and every account in our system has the letter A and then a six digit code of random numbers that is kind of associated to that account, right? It's like that account ID, so to speak. So what this is doing is this is telling Copilot, our, our custom Copilot, that throughout the conversation, if somebody says, a, the letter A followed by six digits, that's an account number. Hold that information, right? And, and this is where we'll, we'll get into variables here in a second, but this is defining what an account number 
looks like. That's actually a really phenomenal way of saying it. This is defining the way an account number looks, what an account number looks like. And the closed list is defining the potential options of coffee type. I'm hoping this makes sense. I definitely went down a little bit of a tangent there. But ultimately, you know, that is, that's entities. Now, how does, I think this statement will, will kind of make it all come together and how this relates to variables is think of entities as, you know, let's say we're shipping something, right? And we have a box and we're taking it to, to FedEx, right? Think of entities as the box itself and the variables as the stuff you actually put inside the box, right? So the, the entity is the container, it's the parameters, it's the, the, the description of what the, inner, the insides will likely look like, right? And so entities define what's expected to be inside the box while the contents of the box is what we really care about. Now, I think this is gonna make more sense as we explain variables, this other half of the puzzle. And variables are what are actually storing and reusing information throughout the conversation. So in that very first example where you know I provided my first name and then it referred back to my name, what's referring back to my, what's showing my name in that message is not an entity. What's showing my name in that message is a variable. And we had set the name variable to Griffin, right? Now, these can be created with different scopes. There are a couple other types, but really you, you need to just know about these two. And this is that you have topic variables and you have global variables. And they're really, you know, if you understand topics, I think these are fairly self-explanatory, but you know, topic variables are limited to be carried out throughout that topic. But the moment you go to another topic, you lose what was in that variable. Global variables, however, span the entire conversation and are, you know, topic agnostic. And so you can, however, share values for topic variables between topics. If enabled, there's a setting, and I, I believe there's a screenshot that shows that. So let's say, for example, I'm capturing, this, this, would, be, this would be a bad example, but let's say that the name is a topic variable, again, from our first example then when I transition to another topic out after the, you know, say the conversation start topic, I can select for this topic variable to go to, to be, you know, shareable to another topic. Um, not necessarily what we're getting into today. Um, there will be, there is a more detailed video on the channel about variables and, and all of these different features if you want to check that out. Global variables as well can receive values from external sources if enabled. So um, say someone is coming to your copilot through a certain interface and that interface has the ability to pass their user ID or their security privileges or, or, any, or their name or anything like that. Global variables can retrieve sources, values from external sources. Here are the different variable types currently within Microsoft Copilot Studio. You know, you can capture strings, booleans, numbers, tables, records, date times, choices, and there's also a, a blank type. The reason that's kind of important is you, you need to be aware of that, especially when it comes to troubleshooting, because skipping down to that final bullet point there is variable inputs are, I couldn't think of a better word, but variable type agnostic in that you can't take a number variable, like say, you know, I have this variable as a number variable and it's set to one, two, three. I can't put one, two, three into a string variable, if that makes sense. Um, it'll throw an error. It won't pass that information. And so just so, so you are aware, and again, we're not necessarily covering how to troubleshoot all this, um, but the type the variable is, is set by the first action or the first conversation node that was I believe created with that variable. So again, check out that video if you wanna learn more about variables themselves. But you can access the variables your copilot is using by opening the variables pane from inside, excuse me, from inside any topic. And this pane will show all the topic and global variables. It will not show the topic variables from other topics, right? This is related to this topic, but it will show, you know, in this screenshot we have three topic variables and we have four environment variables and we have zero global variables. Environment variables don't have to worry about for this. Now, 
creating variables, this is kind of where it all comes full circle is variables can be set using right now one of two different actions and that is the ask a question node or the set variable node. And in this screenshot we have the ask a question node. And so what this is, is essentially sends a message uh, to the user and whatever their reply is, it takes that reply, understands what it's talking about, and then sets a certain variable based off of their reply. Now, note here, note how I'm using the coffee table entity to define the contents of the variable. So in this screenshot, we have our this question box, what sort of coffee do you like? And then it says identify, this next box where it says coffee type with the little arrow, this is all of your possible entities, all the out of the box ones and all the custom ones. So for example, and then again, save the user response as coffee type choice. That is our variable down at the bottom with the, with the squiggly brackets and the X. And it's an of type choice because our entity is a closed list entity. It is a, it is a choice entity. Now, why is this important? Let's say Copilot asks, what sort of coffee do you like? I will likely, the user will likely respond, I like medium roast coffee, right? We don't wanna store the whole message, I like medium roast coffee in the variable of coffee type. We just wanna capture medium roast. And so this is where kind of the description and everything that, that comes into when we're creating our entities helps define the sort of content that needs to be pulled into the variables. I, I hope this is making sense. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments down below. And you can kind of bring making this full circle, you know, you can use variables then throughout your conversation in your message nodes or to pass to a Power Automate flow or really anything that you can possibly use variables for, right? And so this is kind of showing the original conversation node from the, the very first example, you know, we're adding back the user's name saying, hey, user's name, comma, what sort of coffee do you like? And so then we can refer back to that variable. Say for example, if the customer or the, the Copilot user likes medium roast, then, but we, then if they like medium roast, we want to, send them a certain message saying, um, say there's an additional criteria that we need to understand about medium roast. Oh, do you like this sort of medium roast A or medium roast B? Where if they only liked light roasts, again, so there's the medium roast branch, you also have A and B, right? Say there's the light roast branch and there's only A, then we can use this coffee type variable to build out some conditional logic as well. Hopefully this is making sense. If, if you spend some time clicking around Microsoft Copilot Studio, then this, this branching, I guess I'm trying to explain, will make a little bit more sense. Hopefully at this point, I did some justice in explaining entities and variables, the differences and how they are related so that you can better make Copilot solutions and bring business value to either your employer or on a project that you are consulting on. Thank you to you for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer Channel. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.